Hey guys, what's up? This is Anonis 98 here. What's going on, my pet shoppers and sombers? This is Alyssa No Shop here. Hopping in, all y'all. My name is I Can Snick. Hello everyone, this is Wayne Aries 28, and I had just taken a full pleasure of watching two real films featuring birds that I am a fan of for this review. I mean, it doesn't have anything to do with birds, but I don't know, just about random is it. And boy, I just got hung over from that. I mean, I'm currently drinking Samba Antidote, but seeing this is a review on an episode in Rio, it's definitely not helping. Oh man. Well, though I do find the first one okay, but the second one was just meh. Environmental. Yeah. Hello everybody, this is Downloads Bacon, the real best guy here. Oh, <laughs> my <laughs> Hey, how's it going, guys? It's James the Con Man here, and um, her name is Rio, and she dances on the sand. <laughs> <laughs> that works. And we've got a guest here. Yeah, we, we got a guest for once. Oh. Yay! <laughs> my God, I'm sorry. Hello, my South American guys and gals. This is Alec Greer, aka Alec Bama One, and well, so without further ado, let's go right into the plot. So the plot here is that Blaze and the Pets compete in a carnival parade in Rio. But an old, old nemesis shows feed them, and he will be touched upon very shortly. Yeah, and I'd like to start with the first positive. So the first thing I want to address is the actual holiday uh, festival that occurs in this episode, and that would be Carnival. Carnival is a popular festival in the Caribbean and South America that happens before Ash Wednesday, usually in late February, or early March. And I, I am half Trini, uh, and in Trinidad and Tobago, they celebrate Carnival over there. So, uh, But this is different how Brazil and Rio does it. So in Trinidad, my dad told me it was a two-day festival where you stay awake for both days and party. And he offered me to take me down to uh, Trinidad and celebrate it over there. But I had I didn't go. Uh, I actually was down in Trinidad just a few months ago while I was in vacation and while I was missing some reviews. So this episode speaks to me on a personal level. Um, the next positive I want to list, I think a lot of people can agree with me on this one, is definitely the song. Uh, yeah. Song of Brazil oh, yeah. was a very well-written song. That was the first song we could got in the entire series. Just yeah. want to point that out there. Not bad for her. Definitely, and... Although, one of the things I didn't like is that they automatically assumed, it's Brazil, we gotta throw in the soccer, you know, like everyone has to play soccer, but <laughs> other than that, it was a great song, and it was really catchy, and that's, that's all I can really think of. Yeah. Also with the uh, the jazz trio, that was a really nice piece they added. <laughs> yeah. You know, if I could elaborate on the song just a little bit, I'd like to um just take a small moment to um just applaud everyone who worked on, on that song. Because this just shows how much musical versatility Daniel Ingram has. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's something that, you know, not a lot of people in the music industry have. You know, they're either lumped into one or two genres at the most. Well, Daniel can pretty much do it all. And, and you know, this is just another another uh, kind of, I guess you could say another piece of evidence when it comes to that. Since, you know, this is a very, you know, islandy, you know, very samba, samba y kind of song. You know, so, you know, it's like a chef that can cook anything, you know, that can cook something that's Italian, cook something that's Caribbean, cook something that's, you know, down home American, you know, something like that. So, yeah, yeah so I'd just like to take a moment to uh, just say, yeah, props to, to everyone involved with that. So, yes, a chef can cook things that are Brazilian. Uh, French, and they can cook things that are Chinese. And believe me, we'll get to those episodes later. Don't worry, folks. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'd also like to add on to the song. Uh, I really love the song. It reminds me of um, that Brazil and a lot of other South American and Caribbean countries are very tropical and beautiful. And um, the Tijuca rainforest they mentioned in the episode is actually a real forest in Rio. So uh, I really love how the writers incorporated real world settings and cultures into the show. And I noticed going back onto Sunil's point, how they said um, they play soccer, but they don't call it soccer down there, do they? It's like soccer is only um, an American sport, and they call it football everywhere, yeah. everywhere else. Uh, yeah. I, I do like the song, although I don't really find it as memorable as most songs on the show. I do yeah, like 
for its catchy beat and how it does capture the samba spirit of Rio. I particularly like what I like about this song, well, I mean, despite being like the football soccer like reference, it actually does nicely like nicely like like things about like just the beauty of Brazil and Rio, like around that and Minka is just having a joy over in the in the Amazon particularly and Emma and uh Blythe is even a bomb in there, so time for my positive and let me just spell it out for what that positive is. E M M A H A R T Emma Hart. Emma. <laughs> oh yeah. Emma Hart. Uh, yeah. Those of you who are aware, Emma Hart is actually voiced by Brooke Goldner, who is the daughter of Hasbro's current CEO Brian Goldner. And Emma Hart is just a really good character in this episode because. Well, she was introduced in the Paris of Zoe, but we'll get to that as soon as we get to that episode. <laughs> yeah. But but what she does is she's more of a tense attention reliever for this episode because while life is going all around saying I'm missing my suitcase, Emma's like, is it a good time for me to just help you relax? She tries to help in her own way, even though she's not really good at directions, but she's still a good character. Yeah. And I'd like to add another thing about um, Emma Hart. Uh, her voice actor, uh, Brooke Goldner, she also plays uh, Rebound in Pound Puppies, and Rebound is my favorite character in that show, so I really love that. That's real fascinating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to add a positive. Um, my positive, actually, is surprisingly so. I mean, you may remember, like, uh, uh, like the last time when I thought that uh, I didn't care for Zoe when I first saw it, but now it's like, um, uh, this is one of the ones where I actually <clears throat> did, like, uh, Zoe's zone here because it actually shows much how uh, of her leadership on trying to like crack down on whether Ramon is just foiling on Ramon's just foiling on his second chance just to get revenge on the uh, the pets and Blythe particularly so I mean it, it, she does have her, her senses and and convinces other pets just to uh just, just to crack crack down like uh, on, on Ramon like uh, suspicious activities so that's a good plus right there. Can I add something to that? Yeah. Snake and I can both agree on that statement. Yeah. Alec, do you have any positives? I sure do. Um, I like the setting of the episode, how the setting of the episode really does capture what Rio de Janeiro would feel like if you actually went there. They did a really good job, you know, capturing the, the city and the jungles and the animals and all the other really cool stuff. And uh-huh. uh, I do agree with Ellen Ness. I do like Emma Hart. I like, you know, her voice actor. I like her personality. I I really do like, I do have fun with her on screen, and there are two scenes in the episode which I legitimately really, really like. The beginning where Russell is annoying the life, love that scene, and um, and my favorite one being the scene where Penny Lane is singing, Ramon is up to no good, no good, no good in the neighborhood, Laura, <laughs> Laura Hastings' delivery is spot on, and Russell's reaction is yeah. hilarious. Um, yeah, particularly, like, I actually did, I did find Penny Ling actually amusing, like, I mean, the most particularly, I mean, because, well, like, what you brought up, Alec, was that uh, Penny, Penny particularly, like, tends to not take any sort of, like, um, expression statements uh, uh, literally, like, I mean, he, she takes a bit literally, like, in a sense, like, oh, but, like, uh, the bird will sing or something. But, but, well, apparently, like, she thought that, oh, she already thinks, oh, the bird's gonna sing, like, just, a bird was saying, but then Russell tries to elaborate on her that no, it's not what not what she meant. But she just kept going on with it because you know Penny has a lot of curiosity and is the is the kind is the kind of sweetest of the group. So, and then another funny part, uh, I guess, uh, was when Penny when they're trying to think about Ramon. Penny actually saw this hamburger I, or cheeseburger, I think I don't know, but a burger that he found under like one of the under one of the place and then and then when she was allowed to come out she just eats it like and then making making this awkward like stare like with well we're also making an awkward, awkward stare at her and that's kind of like that's kind of like a bit of a music uh, moment there mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so Neil you said you had a positive but well, I wanted to add uh, Minka as a positive ah uh, yeah and I think you can all probably guess why mm-hmm. because she, for one thing she gets her Solo song. My next reason why she's my one of my positives is that she she knows how to do all the samba stuff and everything. And even though it's 
It's, it just seems to make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, you're right. May I add to add? Yeah, um, I mean, particularly, like, normally when it comes to, like, sort of dancing situations, it would be just, it would be Vinny in charge, because he's, the, the, he's pretty much the only dancer in the group, but then, with me, because I was saying, oh, I know, uh, oh, I actually like to, like, like to sound about a lot, and then that's, that, it was a bit, I don't know, where, like, I, I feel, at first, but apparently, seeing how it makes sense, the fact that, she, um, she, well, she's a monkey, like, and it has a bit of Brazilian, like, a background to her, I mean, naturally, I'm, I mean, it, it, it did actually, like, it, it made her, like, an important, like, portion, like, uh, t- throughout the episode of trying to help, help the pets actually, like, uh, um, uh, practice the samba, like, for, before the carnival, or, um, and to also, like, try, try to win the prize, like, from Ramon, so, it, uh, it, it, it was fun, like, uh, it's fun at, at some, t- some part when you have, like, have, like, a character introduced, I knew, like, skills that you may have not seen it coming, or just you thought, that it, that it just came out of nowhere, but if it's if done well, then it would it would be a good it would be a good thing to accept here. So yeah, yeah. Because at first it felt kind of like a Deus Ex Machina in a way, but then I realized, yeah, I, I could kind of see it. It wasn't too out there like most Machinas are. Next positive, the ending was just the fact that Ramon just got <laughs> it's just karma, just the way it ended. Ramon Lute ends up getting second place, his birds end up tearing apart, and he ends up not being able to go home the same plane. That's just karma. Yeah, yeah speaking of Ramon, that's actually one of my positives, surprisingly, I mean, because, I mean, when I first saw the, uh, saw the episode, I, I actually didn't care, I actually used to, used to not like Ramon, but now it's like, well, I mean, I mean, particularly, like, uh, to the fact of the matter is that, um, Ramon's actually like is pretty much a majority bad in a sense. I mean, like, cause, I mean, cause he's actually like gone the baseball list and crazier like than his first appearance in Big Feather Parade, which, which particularly, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, it's one of those like things when you have a villain like who wants to get second chest, but then you get, re- you, but then you just end up doing bad things, which I thought that was a bit of an overused device that was a bit repeated, which th- that's actually is going to be part of my negative, but but from my positive side though, I mean. I mean, he. I mean, his. Uh, I mean, his little bit of just, 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 just showing how crazy bad he is. It's just so, so entertaining to watch. I mean, cause I mean, it's kind of. It, it, I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. It, it's probably just me, but I just, I just, and I just like, uh, like his, uh, uh, his exciting like crazy badness. Uh, well, when he, uh, when, when, when he just wants to get revenge, but then all of a sudden, just like, well, I mean, we all know he's going to be defeated, but in a way, it's just like, eh, wow. I guess that's just. Uh, that, that, that's pretty deep of him, or bad. Alright, one thing, now, depending on who you are, and it, this is my negative. My biggest negative is that this is almost exactly identical to Big Feather Parade, because Ramon comes back, he does the exact same thing that he just did a few episodes back. There was one pet that got a song, and Ramon ends up losing his stuff, Losing to Blythe, and does not get, you know, he doesn't get disqualified, he doesn't, you know, get arrested for thievery, yeah, but he just walks thing. away. It's just like, what? Yeah. Well, well, he, well, can't go home. well he isn't able to go home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, I know there's that, but, like, if they would have had something a little bit more, you know? And they are in Rio. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah, and... Yeah, I mean, particularly that was actually my same reaction when I first first saw it. I mean, because I mean, I mean, I mean, that's one of my negatives was the fact that Ramon was was a, was a bit like rep- was actually repetitive, like um, f- from the from the first episode he was in. I mean, because I mean, yeah, that's actually what I was like. That's actually what was meant for the my. That's probably my mixed badge for like Ramon. I mean, I mean, sure he's a be bad and, and for me, but but even then it's like he's just. Uh, I mean, he, he just pretty much like, uh, he pretty much is just like in a certain scenario where he just wants to uh, get any chance, but no, it just, he's still gonna like uh, do the same exact thing like last time. I mean, it's like, I mean, we've see, seen it. I mean, it's, that's part of me just saying like, well, I want to see, see a better villain than, than him. So, but, but either way, yeah, I mean, cause the, sometimes, well, you just got like, uh, sometimes you just like don't want to like rely on repeating plot devices at, uh, at some point. So, yeah. Alec, what do you have to say about Ramon? Oh man, I got a lot on my chest. Oh man, Ramon. I I do love over the top villains. I love villains who are just over the top and just you know have a lot of personality, have a lot of charm and 
charisma, but Ramon is just annoying as, I mean, oh my, his, his laugh, every time Ramon laughs, a little kid goes, it goes and hides in his closet, because his laugh is scary, I mean, <laughs> and the fact that he never gets punished, I mean, all he gets, it's just, it's just childlike punishments that he gets, he doesn't get arrested or anything, I mean... Yes, Ramon is my only negative with this episode. Every, t- every time he's on screen, I want to throw up. He's up there with Madison and Jasper as my worst characters on the show. I, that's, yeah. So, that's pretty much it. Ramon um, is not a good character in the in the least bit. If you like him, don't discuss that with me. Because, <laughs> don't do not. Leave Ramon. I well, you know what it. they say, he is no good in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah, no good, no good in the neighborhoods. Mm. <laughs> it all good for him. <laughs> I, I'll take my I'll take my uh, best reference to the episode medal now. <laughs> uh, most people can agree that no one likes Ramon, but I believe he was made. Uh, he was written to be uh, such a jerk and, and to be hated. Mm-hmm. Well, um, I got my other negative, but it's a nitpick, so, yeah, so, actually, the Ramon is, is, is my only, like, uh, major negative, but, uh, so, for my, uh, other nitpick, though, is that it's, it really has to do with, like, the, the plane that Roger is, is actually, like, riding on, it's, the plane that was riding through the streets of, of Rio, which, to me, I kind of thought that, uh, that normally, like, normally, like, well, depending on how the laws are, are, are actually used, is that they, Normally, planes don't actually taxi on on any like street any streets in, in, in a city. I mean, you got cars like under there. How are they gonna like uh, pass through it? I mean, I, I mean particularly like I mean I may have heard that maybe in the carnivals of Rio they actually do like uh re- they do actually sort of like block streets to, to have planes actually actually taxi through. But I mean, what was the case if it actually like uh, sort of like I don't know tries to like get into there for, for like I don't know every day like for every day routines particularly? I mean. I don't know. It's, it, it's 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 just a bit it's a bit confusing this part, especially even the part where like Roger actually sort of takes off off in, in, in through the city. It's like you could have caused much damage though. But I mean, well, the policemen in Brazil are probably are probably like anger care because well, yeah, it's more lenient than the U.S. But I mean, I mean, come on, I mean, and and particularly and in particular even the way it landed is like that's not even <coughs> even the realistic speed. But I guess it's a cartoon. But I don't know. That's mm-hmm. just. Uh, it's just weird. <laughs> Alright, guys. So, overall, this was a pretty good episode. I mean, other than the fact that Ramon, which is, from my per- from my perspective, one of those characters I don't want to see again. Please don't bring him back in Season 3. Please. But, um, other than that... This was this was actually a really good episode. The song was great. The pets were great because when aren't the pets great? Let's see. The song, the pets, Blythe, obviously. Emma was pretty good for the most part. Roger was just being a boss as always. Anytime he's on screen, it's the best. So overall, I'm giving this episode a eight point five out of ten. Actually, no, nine out of ten. I'll have what Neil's having again, and I will give my score for this episode a nine out of ten. Table for two, please. And I'll and I'll take that table for three. I really love this episode. It speaks to me on a personal level, and um, it's so tropical. And I love the tropics. Uh, the only negative things I have to say about this episode is Ramon, and I could also agree on place negative about um about the plane. I would give this episode a nine out of ten. It was a really great episode. Mm-hmm. Um, when I first saw it, I used to find it all right, mainly because I had issues with Ramon being repetitive at times. But it was fun than I thought for me. The song was still good. The main pets have their spot on, and Minka's song experience was very welcome. Mm-hmm. Though Ramon, Ramon is surprisingly enjoyed being bad here, but I think he's still a bit repetitive here. I mean, anyways, I mean, coming from how I actually been seeing the past two real films. Okay, my last time I'm gonna say this. I think this song sums up right here. It sucks though. <laughs> well, anyways, as for this episode, I give this an 8.5 out of 10. As for me, I think this episode is really good, but not the best. Now, for what we got, it was still pretty good. Nothing too wrong. I have about a Brazilian positives. <laughs> 
Minka was great in this episode. All the other pets were good too, especially Penny Ling. Uh, Blythe was pretty good too. The song was nice, and honestly, if I could, I'd say that Daniel Ingram is probably like the Chef Ramsay of music at this point. Because he's been able to diversify and sound pretty good in each. So I cannot wait for more song. Now as for Ramon, Ramon is not a villain that I take too seriously. He's not a negative in my book as much. He's more just of a neutral zone. Because he's funny with his lines and crazy dialogue and his laugh I think is hilarious. But he doesn't seem to learn his lesson because he does the almost the exact same thing of trying to steal Blythe's ideas. Who is, a, is on to him stealing her ideas. So honestly, it's kind of not the smartest idea to do. So I loved everything else. I might give this a BAM! 9.75 out of 10. An awesome episode for everyone to check out. <laughs> you know, I actually, I actually did look back at all of our reviews, and that's always his score, unless it's a 10. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, overall, I thought this was an interesting little episode. I mean... There was something I mentioned, you know, off um, you know, off the air to the other guys about this episode, about how uh, I kind of like the whole little in season two, like the whole little um, international episodes. This being one of them, the other one being you know the Paris episode and the whatnot. Anyway, um, and maybe think of uh, to a lot of the older older guys watching here, um, uh, in. <clears throat> Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the uh, 87 cartoon, they did a sub-series called the uh, Trip to uh, Europe sub, uh, sub-season. I think it was season four or five they did this. And I kind of got those kind of vibes here where they were still technically part of the season, but just they had their own little story arc. And I just thought that was a nice, clever little way of trying to teach, you know, the intended audience, you know, about world cultures and whatnot. Even if it is a little bit simplistic, like the whole emphasis on uh football as, as in this episode but overall i thought it was i thought it was pretty nice i thought it was cute uh the song was great again you know props to danny boy and everyone else that worked on it um for proving one, once again another jo- genre they can dominate ramon was a a good character because even though alec hates his guts that's kind of what the uh the point of the character was someone that you love to hate and I think I think that was I think that was well executed. So on um on a scale of one to ten, I'm gonna give this a, an eight point five. Great episode, highly recommend it. Okay. And Alec. Okay. Um. Overall, this was a pretty solid episode. You know, <clears throat> you know, we're definitely going to see Jasper again, which I am not looking forward to. I do not want to see Madison again. But above all, do not bring Ramon back. But aside from aside from Ramon. This is a pretty good episode. I do like the song. I, I love the setting, how they capture the spirit of Rio de Janeiro, and those two scenes in particular, you know, Russell annoying Blythe and Penny singing like a, like, like a beauty star. And, um, uh, yeah, Emma, Emma's a lot of fun. And, you know, the ending, you know, I forgot to mention that ending's awesome. Roger is such a, is such an awesome dad. And, yeah, this is this isn't my favorite of the travel episodes. That goes to Shane High High James. That I love that episode. It's my favorite of the travel episodes. But this is in the middle. This is better than a little better than the Paris with Zoe. So overall, I'll give this one an A out of ten. Okay, it's time for the, it's time for the randomizer. Let's see what we get this time. Blue, sometime blue, sometime blue, sometime blue, sometime blue. Please, please, please. All right, come on, big bucks, big bucks, no whammy. Stop. Shell break. Get break. Yes. Oh Oh man, do I have positives? Have, 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 have I been, have I been wooing enough? No, let me do it one more time. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> I believe this is the episode that got the rest of the I mean rest of the people like uh that maybe even got into it more than the pilot. But when it was really first released, so yeah. <laughs> Actually, uh, yeah. is it right if I... History uh, lesson. This is the episode that got me into the series. So, I'm really stoked for this. Yep. Alright, guys. So, this is Sunny on Nation 98. Oh, that's... I can snake. We're in 28, and hopefully that someone at the door will come in handy, because ah, now I'm done with all real stuff. Ah. Now I'm... Oh, and this is the Rio... Down a second. This is the one. That Rio makes me happy. <laughs> Alright, James. Is the one, the only con man! Ah!
And this is Alabama One here, sign off, and hopefully I'll be back soon to entertain all you lovely people out there. Alright, and before we actually get uh, signed off, we actually, I actually got a message from, uh, from CC Trainer Link. Oh, cool, what's it say? Alright, it says here, peace out, home slices. He's making sure we don't steal his cat trays again. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, <laughs> Rocky it, it actually, from the last time. <laughs> it actually says on the left. <laughs> hopefully, no one takes my cash for it. Or they'll die. Yeah, yeah or, or I'll get them. <laughs> Alright, guys, and this is the League of Pet Shoppers signing off. We'll see you guys later. Adios. See yeah. you later, all y'all. Take care. Pete, stay close. Rock on, guys. Goodbye. Pet shoppers, thanks. And thanks again. Meanwhile, on a plane back to America. Greetings, everyone. This is CC Trainer Ling. Uh, as you can probably hear, I'm on a plane right now on my way back to my house. I uh, took a trip down to Rio over the weekend just to get a feel for Carnival, especially for uh, the uh, Planet on Rio episode. But unfortunately... I missed my first plane ride home, so now I have to take another plane that I'm on right now, so... Uh, for my final thoughts, I think the episode was pretty... was pretty average. It really wasn't the, uh, strongest episode of, of this all-around-the-world arc, as I call it. It definitely could have been better. Probably had a different bad guy for this episode, rather than Ramon. Just... He just didn't need to be here. It probably uh, could have been someone else who was from Brazil. Would have been simpler. Would have been easier. My other negative is... I don't, I don't even know if you can call it a negative, but I'll just call it a little bit of a pet peeve. That would be Ramona, his little pet robo-bird. I just gotta ask, how could no one tell that that bird was not real and it was just a mechanical pet? It was pretty obvious that Ramona was not real the first time I saw the episode. It just baffles me that, you know, Roger was able to get Ramon and Ramona on the plane and not even question if that bird was real or not. And and even the judges would just completely be blindsided by those birds when uh, Ramon used them in Carnival Parade. I think other than those uh, negatives, I think what really saved this episode from from being labeled among the worst of season two would definitely be Minka, the song, and Carnival. It's those three things that saved this episode. Without them, this episode really would have been bad. So with that in mind, I will give this a 7 out of 10. And so with that in mind, um, I will be landing soon. I will be back in my home in just a couple of hours, so... Until then, I'll see you in the next review. So, peace out, home slices. I swear to God, nobody better views that line. <laughs>